Well, we're going to move on to something a little bit easier. I'm thinking that the uh, Ag Econ textbook that I'm using is is pretty um, it's pretty intensive. Uh, so I'm I'm going to move into covering some some of the you know easier stuff the um, stuff that would actually be more useful in our um, everyday lives and and then also you know talk about what what ag econ just the basics of it and get through through that kind of stuff so so what we're going to talk about this week is managing personal finances um and it's going to be a short lesson pretty straightforward um i'll i'll give you guys like your assignments at the end of this but this is a this is pretty much what this is a good place for us to move on and into so Okay, so why is financial management important? Well, I mean, you've got to know what your financial standing is, and you've got to be able to set priorities and needs, plan credit needs, uh, tax planning and reporting. This is all important stuff for you guys to know, uh, especially since you know next year when you're when you're graduated and you're out on your own and you're trying to you're either in college or you're in a job. It's going to be extremely important to be able to do some financial planning, some financial management. Um, because if not, and I, I'm, I'll tell you guys from experience, um, it's it's tough to manage finances when you've got these bills to pay here, these bills to pay here, or i got to get groceries, um, so on and so forth. You just don't under, you don't think about like a lot of the costs. At least I didn't as a, uh, you know, uh, fresh out of high school and into college, you don't think about some of those costs. Um, you know, for some of you may, you may have a car payment, you know, um, you may have to pay rent, whatever it's, it's, you know, you got these different, you, you have to be able to plan your finances accordingly so you can, you know, live, um, you know, comfortably. Okay. So some disadvantages of like to personal financial management is like the initial setup take it, it takes time to set up a personal finance management and then you have to keep you have to stay on top of it you have to stay organized and like for me that's tough to stay on top of that kind of thing like you know making a budget every month that's that's hard you know making sure you pay your bills on time you guys whenever you know, you get older and you, you start having to pay bills and there's, you got bills on the first of the month and you got bills on the 10th of the month and you got bills on the 15th of the month and you got bills on the 20th of the month. It just gets tough to kind of keep track of everything that's, that's there. Um, so, you know, that's where that initial setup takes time. You got to make sure you know each and every date that there's something due or there's, you know, you know when your paycheck comes in. And then you got to keep that updated because it may change month to month. It, the prices may change month to month. The whatever, some, something's going to be different every single month. Okay, so a budget. What What is a budget? It's a formal written or unwritten plan. It includes sources of income and expenses. That's pretty straightforward, easy definitions. But like I said, you're, you're, you're looking at a budget and say you make... Let's just use the same example or this example of like you make 3000 a month and you make $1,500 a paycheck. So, and you get paid on the 15th and the 30th. Okay. Well, you, you have $3,000, you, you make $3,000 in a month. Okay. Um, and so you take that and you, you say, okay, the 15th, I'm going to pay my my utility bills so i'll pay the city bill and i'll pay my electric bill and i'll pay my gas bill um and i'll pay my water bill or whatever it may be so there you got four bills and that may total up to like 350 bucks okay so you you take 350 off the 1500 okay oh i also got a car payment that's due on the um 15th so that's another 400 dollars. okay so you take that off fifteen hundred. Then you you're like, okay, I got a phone bill that's all that's due on the the seventeenth. That's another 
$150 and you take that off the table. After doing all that, you're not left. That's, you know, that is uh, about $900 of your $1,500 check. So that leaves you with, what, 600 bucks, right? For that, for that paycheck. Okay, so say you wanna put that in your savings. Okay, so you put 600 in your savings and then, well, but we, you know, you gotta figure out, you gotta figure in like grocery. So you might say another $200. So that leaves you with four, 400 in this in your savings account okay then you move to the 30th um, and you get your next your next paycheck and it's another fifteen hundred dollars but your your rent is 750 okay so that takes out half of of your paycheck there okay and it's just there's it, that's how it works guys is you got to figure out how much of your paycheck can you put into your savings account or can you can you save from having to go towards one of these expenses okay and i mean it's it's not like you're wasting that money or that money is getting wasted because you're using it so you can live basically okay so like the budget will include like income and expenses and that's kind of what i'm talking about like that paycheck is your income and the expenses are all the uh, you know your gas bill your utilities your phone, your if you do if you do TV, um, you know we uh, we cut out we cut out doing like cable. Um, so we just do like for me we just do like Netflix and, and Hulu or you know and and we just pay for those services and it's a little cheaper. Um, we can still do some like live stuff, so it's not not too too big of an issue for us to do that. But I mean, it's just like you got to figure out what what you want to pay for, what you don't want to pay for. Okay, so how do you prepare a budget? How can you do that? Well, to prepare a budget, you have to consider like what your source of income and items are purchased, and then categorize the use of your cash, whether it's a necessity or a luxury. And that's kind of what I was just talking about. It, we didn't really need cable TV or, or satellite TV, so we didn't we're doing. We don't purchase that. Okay. So some here's here's six good steps for financial planning. Gather personal financial and financial data. Okay. Establish financial goals and objectives. Analyze financial information to identify alternatives to achieve goals and objectives. Develop a financial plan. Implement the plan. Re review the plan on a regular basis. And like the regular basis would be like every month you got to implement the plan i mean it's it's hard to to figure out what your financial plan will look like and then it's hard to implement it and then you have to check it you have to review it every month to make sure you're doing what you need to so it is tough it is tough to kind of do financial planning okay this is all important information okay so a checking account um is an account in which a user makes deposits and may write checks or use a debit card to be paid from the account. And that's what a debit card is, is it's tied directly to a checking account. Okay, it only uses money in a, in a checking account, whereas a credit card is, is a little different. You know, and I, I, you know, a credit card will, you may have like a, um, oh, you may do like a, a thousand dollar limit on your credit card okay and then you tr you have and say you buy a TV with that credit card and it costs you 750 bucks so you have 250 left on on your credit card but then you have to you have to be able to pay off that credit card okay and if you don't pay on it regularly you can pay there some do like a limit of like oh 25 bucks a month and you could do that but the more you pay on it and the the more money you pay on it if you pay more than the minimum the it helps your credit score go up if that makes any sense so that's that's kind of how they're different um, a debit card is just directly tied to your your checking account okay so uh, checking uh, um, 
what are what are the advantages of a checking account a checking account that reduces the need to carry large quantities of cash okay so you can use like a check or debit card uh, you don't have to carry around cash you may be able to accrue interest while the money is in the account okay it's a safe way to pay by mail or online and and really it's good to pay online because it's easier it's a lot easier than paying by mail um, most all businesses accept checks or use a debit card to, uh, you know they you can pay directly from your checking account and then most banks provide provide online services okay even our small little bank here in, in Melrose they have a they have an app they they use they you can do all your banking online if you want to through them so what are the disadvantages? Um, you know, you may have to pay a monthly fee to keep your checking account, and it may be something like, you know, eight to ten bucks a month or whatever. It's really not that expensive. Um, it's required to balance the checkbook. Uh, you 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 need time to to balance the checkbook. There may be a minimum balance requirements. Um, you can have stolen or lost checks or debit card, and people will will use that to to basically take money away from you if you lose those so um, large charges are levied against overdrafts and that's when a check is written in an amount greater than the account balance okay um, of, avoid the use of pin numbers to avoid hacking and protect your password for online banking because that's like you know we at American Heritage Bank, they give out debit. You can use debit cards. You can use online banking, um, but they're susceptible to hacking too. Like I've, I've had my debit card. I've had to basically get it canceled and get a new one because somebody tried to hack in and, and use it. So, I mean, that kind of stuff happens everywhere. So there's we're going to talk about different types of checkbooks because you know it's important. Once you get a checking account that you get checkbooks because writing checks is is fairly fairly easy so there's a duplicate check um it's carbon copy remains in the checkbook that's pretty well the most um sorry let me move the slide here but carbon, duplicate check is carbon copy it remains in the checkbook um and it's this is pretty much your most common type of personal checkbook um stub Stub, inf it's information that remains in the checkbook. Um, there's safety paper or watermark that makes a photocopy obvious. And then the the desk set is a large binder with three checks per page. And that's more for like a business type setting. Okay, so balancing a checkbook. Um, okay, so if you balance a checkbook, it, you mark deposits and checks that have cleared the bank. You add to the current balance those checks that are written but not cleared. So you subtract any deposits that are that are made but not cleared. You subtract any service charges or add any interest. Um, you compare the ending balance in the checkbook against the monthly statement. Okay, that's kind of the basics of balancing a checkbook. Now it's really easy because you're if you have online banking, it's it basically balances for you. And if you write a check, by the, it, whenever it clears, that automatically goes into that online banking and comes, becomes a part of your statement. Okay, so it's this is kind of a, if you use online banking, it makes this a lot easier than having to do this. Like, I don't, I have a checkbook. I don't balance my checkbook because my online banking does that for me. Okay, what types of investments are available? Well, you have insured savings accounts, saving bonds, um, certificates um, of deposit or CDs, um, bonds, mutual funds, stocks. So savings accounts are basically just, you know, if if grandma gives you 50 bucks and you wanna, you wanna keep it, put it in your savings account. Okay, they're savings bonds, kind of a similar thing but it's just savings that are put into to money bonds um, there's certificates of deposit you can deposit a certain amount um, bonds mutual funds stocks 
stocks, that's kind of that risky investment. If you invest in some sort of stock of a company, um, you know, and it does real well, it'll, it'll basically make you money. If, if it tanks, you will lose money. That's just kind of the way that works there. An insured savings account. Okay, we're going to talk about these real quick. Um, they're available through banks, savings and loans, associations, and other financial institutions insured by a government agency. So if somebody was to steal money out of it, it would be insured. They are considered safe and convenient. All savings accounts are insured to a specific limit of like $250 million. Okay, just a mere $250 million is what they're insured to. Okay, so certificates of deposits or CDs. Um, saving certificates worth a specific amount of money for a specific amount of time with a set interest rate. And an interest rate means, okay, I'm going to put this certificate, um, I'm going to leave it, okay, I'm going to leave it and deposit it, and it's just going to build interest. So when you, you know, come to get that, it's going to be worth more, okay? So it usually pays a higher interest rate than like passbook savings accounts and are fairly convenient. Um, a penalty is assessed if money is withdrawn prior to the maturity date. So it's like, um, you know, you put 300 bucks in a certificate deposit um, and you do it today and you let it sit there for five years and you go to pull it out, you, you gotta withdraw it. If you withdraw it, before that, you may you may lose money on it. But if you wait till that five years is up, and you go to withdraw it, it's going to be worth more than when you put it in. Okay, so a savings bond. Um, they're available through most financial institutions. They can be purchased through payroll deductions. And they involve investing in the federal government by buying bonds with a set maturity date at a price below the face value of the bond. Kind of a similar thing. You can build money, but it's through the federal government. Okay. A bond. Um, there are certificates of debt, of debt. They're issued by corporations or government agencies. Bonds... Um, you know, promise payments of interest on specific dates. Original investment is also paid back at maturity. So by the time it hits that date, you get that money back. And then bonds are a long-term investment. Mutual funds. That invests, investors pool their money. They use professional money managers to manage the pool of money for the individual investors. The interest is paid to the investors based on the amount invested. Quite often, the investment is made by payroll deduction. Okay. Stocks. Stocks represent a share of ownership um, in a company. The value of the stock can increase or decrease based on performance of the company. Okay. And this little, like, table here basically just says, like, if you go down to, like, oil and gas and, you know, you look at what that's at and it's you know you see from the 30th of june to the 31st of may so it's like a almost a full year and it's down like two point or it's up 6.81 percent so that stock would have increased you would get you'd get some money off of that okay so to just review, you need to know how would you conduct budgeting of personal finances? How are financial goals developed? How can you use and balance a checking account? And then can comparing the characteristics of various types of, of different investments. And that's kind of all we're talking about. This one's a little easier than what we've been doing. Um, so for this week, the assignments will kind of be the same as last week. Um, I'll do a discussion. And I'll do a quiz, and the quiz may just be a discussion question again. So make sure you answer those guys. Make sure you're doing your work. Um, I'm going to be putting in grades pretty soon, and some of you might not be doing so well. So um, just, just know you need to get that stuff done. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, you know, 
contact me, I'll be willing to help out. Or if I make a mistake on something, you know, just let me know and I'll, I'll help you out. So, um, with that guys, that's all for today. Uh, we'll talk to y'all next week. Bye.